Good day. All right, let's do it. Top five favorite Final Fantasy games. I get asked this question all the time, so I decided not. I'm just going to do a video. I also saw Sue Lightning do it. So, Sue, this is a response to you. You did your top five favorite Final Fantasies. I'm now going to do mine. Now, before we start, I'm going to have to do the typical defend my decisions section, which <laughs> is going to be... I haven't played 1 and 2, I've only played 6 hours of 3, but other than that I've played every other mainline Final Fantasy and a good healthy number of the spin-offs. And just like every top 10 or top 5 video ever, I'm going to say it, this is just my choice, respect it. I know you might disagree, but hell, if your choice was the same as mine, what a boring world we would live in. So these are my top 5 favourite Final Fantasy games, I'm going to give you a quick reason as to why, so let's do it, let's go. So at number five, and honestly, give me one rendition of Kiss Me Goodbye, and I would have stuck number eight at this spot. But right now, as it stands on how the weather is today and how I'm feeling and the chicken sandwich I ate earlier, I'm going number four, Final Fantasy IV. I love that game. I see that as the most traditional Final Fantasy, and I do, the most traditional. Everything down from the crystals to the themes to the airships to the characters, to me, it's just... It's Final Fantasy. And what I like about 4 is it still holds up now. I played it legitimately about a year ago. The 3 d I could barely speak today. What's good guys? My favourite game is Final Fantasy 4. Fucking dope. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. 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 And then there's the story. Stuff is constantly happening. Stuff good stuff, exciting stuff. It progressively builds up more and more and more. And it doesn't slow, it doesn't peter out. It's constant. From going to the moon, to going to the underworld and meeting dwarfs, to characters constantly dying and coming back admittedly. And that's just an emotional roller coaster all to itself. And subscribe. And I was just on the edge of my seat the entire time that I played that game. I mean, with Kane, you wouldn't know for one minute if he was good or bad. He was constantly flipping from the dark side to the light side, flipping more than Hillary Clinton flips on her policy positions and all in all it just made for a story that I was so immersed I was so gripped and sold on that even when the super cheesy stuff happens because Final Fantasy 4 all in all is pretty cheesy I'm talking Cecil only you can use the crystal my brother by the time we got to that point in the game I'm just like yes Cecil do it do it <laughs> favorite character Edge him and his cheeky ass flirting with the ladies, he is masterful. Sure, he doesn't it doesn't get him laid once in the game, but that's beside the point. Final Fantasy IV is dope. Have you played it? No. Why not? It's dope. <laughs> Play it. <laughs> now my number four pick, the MP4 file got corrupted, so I've had to re-record it today. And I think this is a really ironic sign because this is by far going to be the most unpopular pick. You guys, some of you are going to go smash the dislike button for this, I know, but I'm saying it loud and I'm saying it proud. Final Fantasy X-2. What? What did you say? Uh, nothing. You know the law. Never ever mention that name. In my presence. Yes, you heard that correct. This game is just fun, pure shameless fun. And trust me when I say this, guys, no one is more surprised that I'm rating this number four out of all the other Final Fantasy games than me. Honestly, I hated this game when I first played it. Hated it. I was about 15, I played it, I strongly disliked it. And then it was about three years later, after I more or less threw the first one in the garbage, I came back and I played it. And I absolutely fell in love with it from the combat system, which I still maintain is the best turn based has ever been in this franchise. I really mean it, job classes by far have been my favourite in uh, Final Fantasy and we hadn't had it for about 10-15 years and when 10-2 brought it back in a really unique reinvigorated way, the dress fears, they looked good, the way the characters were put in free moving positions rather than the uniform regimented lines. The really quirky little special attacks and the little things like the trigger happy where you had to hit the L2 key. Even though I really sucked at it. Hashtag fat finger crew. But besides that, the OST was just phenomenal with songs like Thousand Words, Real Emotion, Besaid Island, Windcrest Trials. Riku's outfit. And there were so many mini games and besides Final Fantasy 7, they were some of the funnest in my personal opinion. Gunnan's Gauntlet, the Lightning Calibration Tower was really well done mini games that kept me entertained for countless hours. Yuna become sexier. And the story, despite being very j poppy and yes, very cringy at points, I kind of almost think that was intentional. It was actually pretty deep. It was a phenomenal continuation of 10 and that's probably why I'm placing 10 
2 as high as I do. It is because of a lot of love for 10, and I kind of see 10 2 as the cherry on the top. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was Shun and Len's story, and I found that incredibly touching. And everything with Spira, how it had progressed since Sin had been defeated, and moving into a new era with new factions appearing, people having to find new paths and meanings in life outside of religion. All topped off with what my feels still associate as just one of the happiest complete endings in the entire franchise. Feels that, once again, I have to give huge thanks and credit to its fantastic, absolutely phenomenal prequel. And number three, I'm going to play Final Fantasy 13-2. It has to be 13-2. Honestly, that game introduced and is still some of my a cast of my favourite characters. Noel, Sarah, Yule, Caius Ballard, he's still one of my favourite villains. I think even maybe Arden is now, because Arden was dope. Uh, all I'll say on that front is the reason why Final Fantasy 15 isn't making this list is because I kind of don't feel like the game's over. I mean there's still DLC, there's still more story, so I don't want to judge it just yet. So uh, that's why 15 isn't the list. Perhaps it will be on this list once we get it, but... And with 13 too, the story was... The story is the main thing for me. Honestly, with your story, I, I found myself multiple times throughout that game choking up. That's probably one of the games I was most emotionally invested in. And I'm surprised I like this game as much as I do. The fact that it has all the time traveling, which is almost like puzzles. You have to figure out what part in time you have to go back to to do that part of the story. And you guys know I hate puzzles. I hate them. I despise them because I'm shit at them. But with 13-2, I actually loved it. Then there's the soundtrack, which is probably gonna be the second biggest reason. Actually, it might be the biggest reason. 13-2, I still maintain today that is the best soundtrack in the entire Final Fantasy franchise. It was definitely the most experimental and it just worked. It had every type of music genre you can imagine, from rock to metal to pop to the real slow melodic pieces. It had everything in that game. And yet it worked and everything, I mean, I'm surprised. 32, it just seems like it shouldn't work. The way it reopened the story from Final Fantasy 13, it doesn't seem like that should work and yet it did for me. Kind of the same reason I like 10-2. It's, it's again that cherry on the top. I really like FF13, go hit the dislike button. I was super excited to see when the characters from 13 like Vanille and Fang and Snow would appear and you now you would see them at different points and Lightning was off doing all her mysterious stuff slowly tied back into the first one. It just kept me gripped and engaged and all in all it was one of the most enjoyable experiences I've ever had in a Final Fantasy. Favourite character, Noel Christ. This guy. This guy I'm telling you. I'm not even going to say anything else, just Noel Christ and Chocolina guys. Where do we even begin? <laughs> when? <laughs> Never saw it coming. At number two, I am going type zero. Type zero. And you guys know I flip between this and my number one choice on a regular. I know my list is very abnormal. A lot of people, a lot of you are probably hating my list at that point, this point. But honestly, this is my genuine picks. And type zero is my second favorite Final Fantasy of all time. The combat system is honestly my favorite, even more than 10-2. Uh, type 0 was is the only Final Fantasy I've legitimately played two run-throughs back to back. As soon as I finished Type 0, I played it again. 300 hours I clocked in, and a big part of that was because I actually found the combat so damn fun. With a class of 13 and they have all their different weapons and unique abilities and the quick switch function which was just so cool, I honestly just spent about 10-15 hour stretches in one go just fighting mobs. Just fighting mobs. Stick me in a dungeon that lasted 5-10 hours with loads of wipes and game overs and whatnot. To do that back in the past, I would have despaired. If I got a game over after doing five hours of a dungeon type zero, I'd kind of celebrate. Yeah, great. Another go through this dungeon again. Brilliant. It implemented magic well. It implemented me mechanics. I liked the really fast pace. It was super fast pace. You had to constantly be moving and dodging and watching the field and everything about it was just really well done. Not to mention the story. Now, the story of type zero is where I think this is what fractures people. Uh, type 0 is a mess in the way it presents its story. I uh, know I'm straight up saying that. Uh, you can actually skip about 60% of Type 0's story. Sometimes you'd get story cutscenes that you could only get if you went and talked to one NPC in the school. Uh, I mean, legitimately, in this game, you had to, between every mission, go around and speak to every NPC in the school. And bearing in mind there's about 100 of them. 
that's a lot of talking to NPCs and if you missed any of them you could potentially miss out huge important vital sections of the storyline. Even if you wandered out of the school and missed the school timings by a couple of hours it would almost mean that you had to do an entire second playthrough unless you did it perfectly the first time with no mistakes you could actually miss the true story of Type Zero. There's this huge secret ending and this, I'm not going to say it for spoilers for anyone who hasn't played it but there's this major secret and this huge critical plot point that you could actually miss. Now I know this all sounds terrible but here's the thing guys if you get that story if you experience it like me honestly it's one of the best stories in Final Fantasy period. I mean it the best Final Fantasy story of all time is Type Zero. It was so dark it was so gritty it was so well fleshed out there was so much to it there was so so much emotion and honestly that's why a lot of Type Zero fans a lot of uh, people on my channel who are also Type Zero fans their favorite game they resonate these same thoughts as me. Type Zero is one of the best stories of all time. But Type Zero doesn't hold back. You've got the class of 13, and I love each one of those characters. Each one, a lot of people don't like that they're just the extremes of archetypes, but there's actually a very good reason for that. They're trying to find a Gito, they're trying to find what personality trait uh, can achieve a Gito. And while some people see that as a criticism, I actually saw that as incredible. You had a class of 13 who somehow were one of the closest most tight-knit groups of any Final Fantasy. I mean legitimately these guys were like family and yet they were all so different and it just it created really interesting dynamics. The character designs were really dope. Roberto Ferrari who did most of the designing for FF15 he designed a lot of the Type Zero characters but honestly I could rabbit on all day about all the reasons why I like Type Zero but all I would say for any Final Fan uh, anyone who subscribed to my channel any Final Fantasy fan who hasn't played Type Zero give it a chance give it a chance and when you go at it really structure your playthrough and really structure getting the full amount of the story don't be minimalist with it if you be minimalist the story makes no sense and it's kind of shit but get it right and trust me this will be one of the most engaging gritty dark stories you've ever played favorite character seven who was in my team seven size and jack and also cater cater is an absolute boss she is the best one to run a gita tower with highly recommend cater Fuck out of here. <laughs> Next up, I'm going, and yes, I know this is a super boring pick, and half of you probably waited this long to see what my favorite Final Fantasy is, and you're gonna be fairly disappointed. I'm going Final Fantasy VII. I know, it's cliche. Uh, but there, I think there's a reason for that guys. Have you ever wondered? I know a lot of people say it's overrated and perhaps it is perhaps the fact that a lot of us did start around the Final Fantasy 7 era and it was the first Final Fantasy in 3D and on the PlayStation. Perhaps the nostalgia is driving our love for it. Perhaps it is overrated. Perhaps it's just a fucking good game. I can't tell you how excited I'm for the FF7 remake and this is my favorite Final Fantasy where I mean, all it takes is for me to hear a single Final Fantasy song and I'm instantly transported back to being a child. And that's one of the best things about it. Sat there, 11 years old with your 18 inch screen. You rushed home from school, you didn't play football, you didn't go out with your mates because you wanted to get back and continue the story with Cloud and the gang. And you'd be sat cross-legged on your bed playing it. They shout up to you to come down for dinner. And then you'd say in a minute and half an hour would pass until the crazy bitch would come upstairs and almost drag you out by your damn hair. That is priceless. That is honestly priceless. And what about what is specifically striking about Seven? is how vast it is. I said this on my previous video, in 7 you do so much. You traverse three or four different mountains, you go into space, you go under sea, you go to Midgar. And 7 just had this formula of getting you emotionally invested so quickly. When they took out Avalanche, you know, you had that, you was emotionally invested enough to hate Shinra. And then when the uh, opponent flipped to Sephiroth, they then brought that in right, they showed the Nibelheim, and then they brought him with Aerith, and he was emotionally invested in taking that down, and they just timed and built everything up so well. I think that's the success of Final Fantasy VII. It did everything right. It did everything in the right order. But all the dark grittiness aside, it was just generally fun. It was hilarious. You'd go to the Honey Bee Inn and uh, back when I was 11 years old, I didn't even know what a prostitute house was. So when I was in there, there's all these guys in the hot tubs and I, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I think at one point I might have asked my parents what was going on. <laughs> no, I remember. I legitimately asked my nan what the fuck was going on as Dawn Cornelia was... 
Also ich muss was, 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 was. I think the response was he's just being silly. But Square Enix, or I mean Square Soft back then, when they made Final Fantasy VII, they knew how to toy with your emotions. They knew they got the whole love triangles going on, and and the thing is, every character was so developed. I mean, Barrett. He started off as a typical stereotype, stereotypical black dude, and then they brought his story in with Dean and Marlene and how he cares. And I mean, th that's the thing, they flipped the stereotypes, and that's one of the things I like. And then everything with the Turks and all of the little other additional things that they had in the game, all the little different factions and people involved. You know, the Turks and Avalanche working together at some point, th there was some really clever stuff in there. And if FF7 Remake can even realise a fraction of that, and that's the thing, that is a lot to realise, that's a lot of areas, that is a lot of content. Honestly, I've covered these videos before. Fully realised version of FF7 Remake, um, now, even with some of the supporting material, like with Zack Fair and and Jill, I mean, even without any of that being in it, which that's the other beautiful thing about FF7. But even if they didn't do any of that, just to fully realise that game in today's graphics and today's scale, it would actually push the game time of that game from about 40 hours to over 110 hours. The only way that they would be able to remake that game into a 14 at 40 hour single game is to make considerable cuts. They've said that. I mean, it is just a fact. I've done two videos on this. No one's been able to refute it just yet. So if anyone who says they don't want this game to be episodic, they don't want this to be done across three games or Square Enix should we do that, you have to ask yourself, would you mind there being cuts to FF7? I've sat long and hard and thought about it. There's not a single thing from FF7 the original that they could cut. I said this before, Barrett and Dean's scene. That's the kind of thing that would get cut. It would. That would get cut straight away. Honestly, single game, that is gone. And yet, even with that single scene cut, FF7 Remake, uh, FF7 wouldn't be what it was. Every scene is important. None of it could be cut. So that's my top five list, guys. Uh, I said it would be controversial. I said a lot of you wouldn't like it. How many of you agree with me? Yeah, let me know what your picks are. I mean, I know a lot of you are going to go down there and say, why isn't FF9 in there? Why isn't FF6 in there, peasant? Tactics. Why isn't 8? Why isn't 10? Why isn't 12? Fine, they're all my joint number one. All of them. But I've, I can't decide. They're all even at number one. Is that what you want? Is that what you want to hear? No, I have to make a pick of five, and that's it, and I'm committing to it. Deal with it, bitches. Come on! Oh!